Well, I've been here for 18 months, and I think uh, the last two days so far, anyways, and the third to come are probably the most interesting so far in terms of the evidence uh, around how Canada protects wild salmon from disease outbreaks and, and transmission from salmon farms. Uh, there's been lots of evidence to suggest that that uh, there is infectious salmon anemia in British Columbia. Uh, three different labs, uh, we heard evidence from, have uh, tested positive uh, for uh, ISA in, in, in farmed and wild salmon in British Columbia. And, and one of those labs is a DFO, Fisheries and Oceans Lab. And so the evidence, I think, is pretty strong. Uh, despite the recent denial uh, of the government that there's ISA in British Columbia, that is, in fact, it is here in British Columbia. When the uh, evidentiary hearings ended uh, in in, uh, in the fall of, of 2011, we uh, were assured that there's no ISA in, in British Columbia. But uh, just uh, a couple weeks after the hearings uh, closed, uh, there were uh, reports of ISA in juvenile sockeye in, in British Columbia that were uh, sent in and tested uh, by Simon Fraser University. So uh, the hearings have been reopened, and we've since found that Department of Fisheries and Oceans has found infectious salmon anemia in farmed and wild salmon in British Columbia. And uh, that's quite a finding. So, uh, you know, we had a lot of denial by government that ISA was in British Columbia. In fact, this is recently as a December 2nd, uh, 2011 press release from uh, Fisheries Minister Keith Ashfield saying there's no ISA in British Columbia. But incidentally, that that uh, press release that was, was sent out uh, came after the Department of Fisheries and Oceans found ISA in salmon and briefed, uh, you know, their scientists internally. So, uh, good evidence that we have ISA in, in, in uh, not only in sockeye, but in a farm Chinook in British Columbia at this time. What about that other virus that we just uh, reported yesterday? Uh, another virus, yeah. Well, it sounds like we probably are sort of uncovering a lot of different things in British Columbia, but we also heard from Christy Miller, head of DFO Genomics, yesterday in, in, at the Cohen Inquiry that she found a Picene real virus, uh, which is responsible for heart and skeletal muscle inflammation in, in salmon and uh, fairly high mortality rates in farm salmon at least uh, in, in places in the world where uh, salmon are farmed and we fought, find HFs, HSMI and uh, we, uh, or HMSI, sorry, and we uh, are, you know, have to be concerned that, uh, you know, those kind of diseases, uh, you know, might get into wild fish. Uh, there's uh, lots of hosts in, in salmon farms. Our, our salmon farms in British Columbia are extremely large, maybe three quarters of a million fish crammed into a little net pen. Uh, and uh, these farms, as science has shown around the world, are ideal places where you get the crowding of hosts and you get uh, the, uh, uh, the development and uh, transmission and mutations of diseases in these farms that can then affect wild fish that pass by these open neck cages. We uh, have seen lots of compelling evidence that there are a lot of things impacting sockeye in the Fraser River. Uh, certainly there's evidence that uh, sea lice can impact wild fish. We don't have a lot of firm evidence on, on sockeye, but uh, certainly fish as large as sockeye, uh, juveniles have been impacted by sea lice in, in other parts of the world. And coho salmon, which uh, are, are much larger as juveniles than pink salmon, which have been impacted, have been impacted by sea lice on, on this coast. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility that, that sea lice impact uh, Fraser sockeye. Uh, it certainly seems that there are other things that are impacting sockeye. They have all kinds of stresses uh, in different parts of their, their life history. Thermal stress when they come back, uh, you know, uh, farm stress around the coast, food stress, and uh, there are also, there's also evidence presented at Cohen that sockeye are, are being outcompeted by juvenile pink salmon, uh, you know, in, in the ocean as well. Uh, so, you know, it, it's probably going to be difficult to pin this uh, decline on just one cause. Uh, but uh, what we need to do is control what we can in terms of what's impacting Fraser sockeye. And we can control, uh, you know, into a large degree the impacts of disease that are coming from salmon farms if we get the farms out of the way of, of, of wild sockeye. And the same with sea lice, get the farms out of the way of wild sockeye, put the farms on land. And we're probably going to be getting rid of a large problem that has caused the decline of wild fish around the world.